Ministries with the lovely Faith Davis. Um, so at this time, we're going to get ready to welcome Miss Faith Davis in. She's from, um, she's retired supervisor from the HR department. So if everyone will direct your attention to Miss Faith Davis, I want to bring her to the stage. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Regina. And good morning. And the um, champions here. What a great uh, dialogue this morning. I, I heard some of it, and, and you all really covered everything. You all can teach this yourself. We can, we can have a real good conversation today. Well, we've been... We've been talking about boundaries from Monday until now we're here Thursday. So we're probably pretty, pretty good as far as what they are and how we're learning how to manage them. We're learning how some of them we might need, like Robin said, we might need to pray about those things. And that touched me as well, um, Robin, because I'm so, I'm so, um, connected to my kids right and, and so um and we talk a lot not saying that we shouldn't or whatever but when they're married and, and everything I don't want to get into all the, <laughs> I don't want to get into all their bits sometimes we you know they ask for our recommendations for our wisdom or what have you and that's good but we do have to respect their boundaries as well as they respect our boundaries and um so it's healthy i think it's healthy because that helps them to grow you know it helps them not to lean so much on on us as parents but you know to make their decisions and to be good with that right to be good with their decisions well Today, um, we're going to embrace um, workplace and our boundaries, and I'm going to need, I'm going to need your help <laughs> today as far as I think more of a discussion. We can have more of a discussion since we've been through uh, other days and we talked about personal boundaries and all all different. We, I mean, we've gone through a whole array of boundaries, but we want to hold on, you know, kind of kind of hold that and then also reflect on those that we've talked about. And then let's talk about when we go into the workplace. OK, so let's go into prayer and then we'll go from there. Father, we just thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for this morning and giving our lives another chance just to go forth in what you've called us to do. We thank you, God, for your love, your kindness, your tender mercies, Father. We thank you, Father, for our families, God. We thank you for those who are surrounding us right now, God. We thank you for the breakfast of champions. Thank you for Marilyn and all the facilitators that have come in and poured unto us, Father. We thank you, God, that we do have a workplace to go. And those who don't, we know that they will help them to find their place, Father. We thank you for our latter experiences, Father, and we know where we are in that, God. We would like to just open up our hearts and our minds today and be able to have healthy discussions about these boundaries, even in the workplace that can affect our, our mental, our emotional, and our work-life balance. So we thank you for this day and we give you all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Regina, for uh, leading that great discussion this morning. All right. So I have been you know, I kind of do a little research in, as far as boundaries in the workplace. And I even thought about my own personal experiences. And I think the personal experiences is what is important, okay? Our personal experiences and what we have already set that we might not have even noticed that we that we have set, you know, boundaries. Because um, I I started thinking about this, and I want to see what you all think. You know, in certain companies, or if you work in government or whatever, you know, they have established policy, right? Policies, 
you know, what you can do, what you can't do, and then also policies in terms of how you conduct business within that environment, right? So I started thinking, I said, so boundaries are really our own policy. What do you think about that? We're establishing our own policy about how we are conducting business. And in these policies, and we have a policy, we can say, we call it um, Robin or, or Regina. This is Regina and Robin's policy. These are my conditions, you know, just like you're writing a document or, or a memo or whatever. And these are the things that you will do and these are the things that you won't do. So those are, you, you're just setting boundaries. This is the low range, this is the high range. And in between, this is where I can, you know, I can live in, in that area. But when you go outside of those areas, that's where the boundaries come in. And, and that's when you might have to communicate um, and say, these are my boundaries. Because sometimes, we don't know. We don't know what our boundaries really are until it presents us, something comes up and presents itself. And then that's when we might have to establish a boundary. And so um, I want to talk about, let's see, and just give a little bit of, of background of these three areas. And then we can um, kind of discuss because we have a mixture in the room. You know, we have um, we have uh, managers in this room. We have uh, people in, in different capacities. Just, you know, you work. Some of you might work in small business, in a small business environment. You might work in a nonprofit environment. We have, uh, you know, uh, Latoya working in a, in a hospital, in a medical environment. So we got all these different, different types of, of work, and then we might have some that I don't even know about <laughs> that we, you know, you can share. But uh, we might have a manufacturing environment, and and in those different in different places of work, we all might have different boundaries that might be a little different, you know, than than what the norm is, right? So, um, you know, in the marketplace. We have our work, our work environments, and so different environments. What we just discussed, a boundary refers to the limits, the guidelines. You might say, like we said, policy, the parameters. You know, I said from here, from low to high, the individuals establish to define acceptable behavior. Okay, behavior, interactions, expectations. OK, those are three things, behavior, interactions, how we interact and also what our expectations are. And these boundaries help us maintain the professional respect, you know, and that's what Harlan was talking about, you know, yesterday. Boundaries, you know, is respect. Right. OK, respect and productivity, because we have to have productivity in the workplace. Right. Boundaries can exist on various levels. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about personal boundaries. Okay, so those those personal boundaries that we have established. And we're going to talk about interpersonal boundaries. And then we have our organizational boundaries. Okay, so personal boundaries. So we talked about personal boundaries. And those are the limits that individuals we can set for their physical for their emotional and mental well-being in the workplace. Okay, so when we talk about our physical boundaries, uh, some of us might work in, in at a desk or a cubicle, or you might have a workstation. Um, you might have, if you like work as a cashier, whatever your your personal space is where you you know actually doing your work, right? And it might be you might move around in other places within your um, company or, or wherever you work. But you do have a dedicated, most people have a dedicated space of where, where they work. And so that's what we're talking about in terms of that. Okay, so you have a physical 
area, okay? Your and also your body, you know, the physical how people interact with you physically. Also emotional boundaries in that and and have your mental well-being you know, our mental in the workplace, right? This includes defining when and how they are willing to engage. You're willing to engage in the workplace related your, to the task that you do, your availability, as far as when you're available for meetings or collaboration or even a comfort level of social interactions, you know, how people are socially interacting with you or personal discussions. So um, in terms of our personal boundaries within the workplace, um, have you all, talk, let's talk about that. Have you all ever had to establish a personal boundary in the workplace, in your work environment? And if you could come off the mic, because um, unless someone can read the chat for me uh, this morning, um, it Excuse has anyone. OK. Yeah, I have. Um, I've had to sit one um, at a previous job I had where I don't know. It was something with a guy that was working um, with me. And I only knew him from working at that job. Like, I didn't know him. He didn't know me. And every time I would, I don't know if he, I don't know, but he always would just be bringing up stuff, saying different things like your husband don't like this and your husband ain't going to like that and this. And I just had to finally say to him like, hey, first of all, stop bringing my husband up to me. And second of all, like this is work. Let's only talk about what go on at work. You know, I don't know where he was going with it, but I mean, it's just, I don't know what his problem was, but like, he constantly, just constantly, just kept on, on kept. I don't know if that was his way of trying to, like, make make conversation, mm -hmm. but it got to be where it was like very annoying. Like he would say stuff to me every day, like he had been at my house, or like he was not like he'd been there, but you know, like like he was somebody that comes to visit, or like I was like, you don't, I don't know you, you don't know me. You don't know my husband. You don't know what my husband would say about this or that. I said, that, that has nothing to do with work. Just like leave. If it's not about what we're talking about at work, just leave it alone. I don't know what his problem was until I just actually had to just say it not so nice to him, you know. But I, that was one of the things that came to my mind. Yeah, were, were you um, at that point, uh, Regina, were you in management? At yes. And you know what I got to thinking, because I I do, I have noticed, you know, through my years of being in management, all men, and then I, I guess that's what I came to the conclusion that all men don't take well to having women bosses. It's a, I've I've encountered that a lot, you know, where just they they just don't like to take, they don't like, you know, having a woman tell them what to do. It's, I mean, and, and I always try to pride myself in saying when I ask somebody to do something, I always try to remember, you know, you want to always be professional. You always want to say please and thank you, you know, say things in a nice way until you have to say things not so nice. Just from um, working under the different owners and different above restaurant leaders, you know how people, they'll just say anything to you any kind of way, don't care how it comes out. So I make sure that I watch that, you know, from the way that, you know, I was done, you know, throughout my years. Well, that's good. Thank you for um, chiming in on that. I have a question that just hit me, even with boundaries um, in the workplace with your, as far as what you do um, over what you've done over the years. Since you work in an establishment that might have an overall um, covering or you you might say um, you might have the company ex as itself, but then you have to deal also with with maybe owners. Is, is, is that correct if, what I'm well, saying? Yes. Well, not not now. Now I'm 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 working where it's, it's, corporate. it's corporate. Yeah. But before, yes, 
where where I was at Waterburger, that was a franchise. And so like the owners, that's what I'm that's what I was saying, trying to say it nicely. They came in every day, Monday through Friday. So, you know, um I I had to um deal with them and then, you know, deal with, with my staff and customers. So, you know, it was coming at me from all areas, always, you know, like I say, they 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 didn't always say things so nicely, you know, kind of people just kind of say, say how they say it, you know, and don't care like about your feelings and, and just something so small as come in every day. Good morning. So, and so good morning. And sure enough, or come in and be like, come in, walk past, speak, walk past me, go to the restroom, tip up and look at the thermostat. And then come back and ask me, what's the thermostat on? <laughs> and I'm just like, my goodness, you just looked at it. You know what it's on. I was thinking this to myself, but I'm just like, well, what would you like it to be on? Is what was what my response at first. And then I got to where, you know, after she did it a few times, I got to where I'm going to go check this thermostat. So when she comes by and asks me, what is the thermostat on? It's on 72 degrees. Would you like to go higher or lower? Just something so simple as that, you know, where you have to deal with just little nitpicking things. So, Right. Now, yeah. we, even though they, they was owned by, you know, a particular person, did, did they have any corporate rules or regulations they had to follow? Yes. Okay. They do. Yeah. So they have their own, their own personal, you know, whatever policies at the end because they were the owner. And then you had the overarching policies. Yes. There. In order, in order for them to be able to like carry the name, they had, they had things that they had to uh, do as far as what corporate, you know, they had, you know, mandated things that they had to do in order to be able to carry the name because at any time they could come. And you know, snatch the name. You'd have to just be a mom and pops. So, okay, exactly. Okay. So they also had expectations, um, to meet from the corporate level. Yes, at the lower level. Okay, got it, got it. So structure is something too. Even in that, Regina. I, I mean, just to analyze that, Regina had to adhere to the to the policies of whatever the owner of of the establishment but then they also had to all come up under the umbrella of the corporate so those boundaries there could could not only just be a personal boundary but we'll talk a little bit of organizational boundaries so i was just bringing that out because you have those boundaries as well in in terms of how it's run and what that company is standing on there you know, policies internal, you know, that would impact all of the individual uh, establishments that they have. Okay, anyone else about personal boundaries? Anyone else has had to deal with? And thank you, Regina, because you, in that time, you were a manager dealing with a man and you had to verbalize. And sometimes the boundary could just be you know, this person in, in case what the scenario was, what Regina was talking about, he was vocalizing and he kept doing it and he kept doing it. So, she, you know, she said, okay, now I got to establish a boundary. So sometimes boundaries are not always presented initially. It's after something happens, then you have to, you know, establish that boundary, right? And then you have to then keep it. Keep it, keep that boundary up and now allow that person to infringe themselves over your boundary. And, and sometimes you got to bring them back. You know, you have to remember and you have to be consistent in that. Anyone else, anyone else have anything as far as a boundary that they might have to establish personally within the workplace? And welcome to everyone who's in the room. That has come in this morning. Good morning, Miss Faith. Good morning, Ladibra. Uh, yes, ma'am. Even at the workplace where I work at, um, we have a thing called um, Teams, Microsoft Teams chat. And when we have those uh, chat lines, if you see our lights are red, 
you know, we're busy or we're in the meetings or, you know, green that we are available. We have banners set up. Like if I'm busy, if my light's red, please don't bother me. You know, I'm in the middle of doing something. Although some people will still bother you anyway. I thought you put it out there. So we have boundaries set up at our workplace. And if anytime anyone want to reach us, if our light's green, feel free to call or send an email. So it's very important to have those boundaries up at the workplace and just have those factors um, for everything in life. So thank you. Look, man, can, can I ask you a question, Ladeepa? Yes, ma'am. Were those bound was uh was that particular boundary that you were talking about was it set up was your own personal boundary or is this an established way you can you know, uh, uh I guess you say teams etiquette that you uh, do it was actually um established uh our my manager told us that you know in the very beginning when I first started about teams you know just let people know hey I'm busy I'm available put your lights on so they can see that. As if not, you know, people are going to constantly bother you throughout the day. And so that's something we're doing here as my team. Other teams are doing it as well, but this is something we uh, um, all try to fall to practice because, like, my light's green. They're going to pick up that phone and call or send an email or whatever because they know I'm available. But if my light's red, do not disturb. That means please do not disturb because I'm in the middle of something. I'm trying to focus. So you have people at times that still try to do it. You know, I have times where people still try to contact me, and I'm like, but, you know, I'm being nice, being professional. I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask her a question after I get done because I did have that boundary up that light said, do not disturb, I'm busy, you know. So <laughs> you still have to still be professional. You can't be rude about it, you know. Right. But some people will still take advantage of it. So, yes, well, ma'am. I was laughing. Not, I wasn't laughing. Um, I was just laughing because we use Teams in my at my job. It's like the go-to everybody is on teams now everybody the whole agency is on teams now some are required to be on teams and some are, re are required to have you know their uh, whatever status that they are you know during the day and as their statuses change some um departments are required to for you to you know visually see that because you can put a note in there and say hey I'm busy or whatever but if that light is on then everybody knows that you are live you know you're you're live feed and you're going on right at that time but um that's a good example about teams as far as establishing boundaries because and I can say as a manager hmm, I didn't really have I didn't care about I didn't care about boundaries in terms of my of my employees at certain times. It all depends. It depended on what the need was. If I had to get an uh, answer to the director or whatever, if they had a red light on, which could mean that they're in a meeting or they're busy. So if they're in a meeting, I wouldn't bother them. I would send them a note in Teams. If they were busy, I'm gonna make I'm gonna come and make them more busy because <laughs> I'm gonna call them and they knew if I called them that it had to be something important, especially if it's red. But um, teams, you know, it's it's a, a way to co collaborate and also communicate. If you all are not familiar with teams, and um, it's a it's a way or a tool or system that is used that you can even meet within teams. You you can even have an established meeting. So a lot of companies are using either Zoom or using Zoom and Teams as a way to collaborate. And that was um, mostly established, I could say, for my agency in the federal government when the pandemic was going on, when COVID was going on, that um oh Robin you use Slack oh okay I don't know what Slack is do you have a, a moment to really share what what Slack what Slack does and and maybe how the boundaries are set up in in Slack I don't know yes I'm... yeah um yeah it's it's how we communicate in real time and and we can see the boundary we can see who's um I think Teams is a little more sophisticated but Slack is good that's what we use 
to put up prayer requests, put up all kinds of stuff because I work at a church. And, um, you know, we have the green, but we don't have the red. We don't have the do not disturb. <laughs> and people are actually, it's not mandatory that people say, I'm busy or I'm available. That's, you know, so I don't think we would even go to teams because it's not that corporate environment. It's more, um, well, it's nonprofit, but it's a church. So it's a little more laid back than than um, teams is. Yeah. So how many, how many um, employees are there working full time? So you have, oh, a um, yeah, it's just, uh, we have, it's a, it's a, a, a fairly large church for this area where I live, but um, there are six pastors mm -hmm. that on full time staff. Yeah. Oh, okay. So and myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so seven of you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. that's so that's a smaller environment. So, yes. So yeah, Slack might be good. You know, instead. Mm -hmm. of and teams and she won't you don't know, have a, a big workforce or or mm -hmm. even 50 you know 50 and under you just have seven okay yes mm -hmm. you really have to do boundaries when you <laughs> because yes. you if you are dedicated to all of the six each person has their own personality which your boundaries might not fit their personality or how they like things done. So, wow. Okay. <laughs> that could be that sometimes that might be dicey a little bit. I, I could, I could just imagine, but I mean, when you set your boundaries and you have to tell them, okay, I, this pastor, this pastor, this, okay, this is how I like it. This is, so you have to interact with them and, and really develop your relationship with each one and how they like work done or how they like to be addressed or, or all that. So we are dealing with boundaries all the time. We just, we probably didn't call them boundaries, but now it, they're more prevalent in our mind. Oh, that's a boundary, right? So yes, um, Oh, okay, Sheena. So you we use Slack. Oh, I can't read your your comment. Can you mind coming off off the mic if you can? If you can. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. Could you read your comment? I'm sorry. I I couldn't read it. Oh no, no problem. Um, I was just uh responding to Robin, letting her know that we use Slack as well, but um Slack um is a way for us to communicate um as well and we also use Teams um as well. So this company I work for is a nonprofit organization. So Slack is a way you have random general conversations, um, just a way to communicate with the team to kind of know what's going on. Now I haven't um um used Slack to um say that I'm away or to say that I'm busy. Um, to turn it off um, just because I'm used to the like Robin said the more sophisticated one where teams will definitely um, let that person know that you're away but Slack is really just a um, tool that we utilize to um, um, kind of have fun with and let the organization know or just resources that we're sharing um, out to the whole org or just kind of what we've done um, things like that but um, it's like Robin said it's a um, different form of communication um it's definitely something that i've never used before but um i don't i don't me personally i don't like it um it's just, i don't even pay attention to slack um honestly if they, they if they need something important most of the time they'll send you an instant message on there mm -hmm. um and um you'll hear it go off but um other than that um it's a pretty cool tool um it sends out reminders when there's anniversaries when there's birthdays oh. um it, in slack mm -hmm. and so, so uh could, could we say that slack is more like a um where you just have you know uh communication between you might say um your co-workers or your peers and like little short messages but teams is uh, is more dealing um uh, with more collaborative tool like when you collaborate more yes yes because um um Slack, the way we use it, um, like I said, we share resources, we do shout outs. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, we, yeah, it's, it, yes. And, and then um, my company is small too. So we have a, 
a little over uh 50 employees. Oh, so, okay. Okay, so yeah. a little small. Now, uh, Sheena, may I ask you, are you still working in the HR arena? Uh yes. Um I just um working um in the HR. Um I stayed up late working on a policy, uh, my first time creating policies because it's a small organization, so they have no policies um in place. And so um just wow. uh, creating um policies and right now I'm creating standard um interview questions um for um just so we can have like a word bank of standardized questions and um working with our track star systems which is our performance um where we do track our performance reviews and things like that so i guess the 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 um, nice part about working for this company because they are growing and they've never had hrs be, um is that i can um be able to um create policies and um and be able to to do the things that I didn't get to do along with getting the experience that I need. So it's it's a pretty great company. Oh, Sheena, I am so proud of you. This is this is really great that um you're getting all this experience and you're the only HR person within the company or you're working there? Um no. Um yes, I, team members. Yeah, yes. Um she started a month um before me. So we started around the the same time and I'm just so blessed to have the, the closest um relationship with this lady um and she's um woman of color like me and so uh, we even have a personal relationship outside of work and um I like the fact that um I can have a great relationship with her she knows I'm green she knows I'm learning and um and and, and she has my back and and I have her back and it's just great to have a manager who I can collaborate with and, and not only do business with, but also have a great personal relationship with outside of work. So it's been awesome. That That is really, really good. And you're learning how to write policy and you, you know, guys has open, open up a whole new, a whole new, I, I <laughs> want to describe it because you have, you can get an array of experience there. I don't want to limit, you know, limit by saying anything, but that's awesome, Shanna. I mean, when, <laughs> if you ever were to leave, look at all what you are going to acquire, you know, during this time. So you, you're just learning, hey, be a sponge. <laughs> yes, I am. I asked my manager because I want to take what I've created because I don't want to, um, take um anything that belongs um to the company because um I um have a flash drive and I think whenever I you know um you know decide to do something else I want to have something that I can bring to the table and say hey I've created policies before um without having that company's logo because I know um you can say things on your flash drive that you've created um and tweak it up with another company and I know that because she does it and and um and things like that so it's it's just great to sit like I say um under a um, black woman that um has my back and 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 just um willing to teach me all of these things and she carry her flash drive everywhere she goes and and that's um another learning too that I had no idea and these are all policies and um jobs create that she's created and um this is definitely something that I've that I've never, you know, been able to learn before. And I'm just very appreciative of it. That's, that's really good using, um, you know, um, when you're doing projects and, and creating policy, um, that flash drive, I wish I had a flash drive long time, long time <laughs> ago, but I mean, but this is awesome because when you go from place to place, you know, when you establish policy, you know, why create the wheel when it's already, you know, when you can already take something, you might not take the whole document, you might take bits and pieces of what you've already created somewhere else and implement it into what you're doing right now. So this is good and, and keep everything, you know, document because you never know when you're going to need it again. Now with your relationship, now, since we're talking about personal boundaries, when you're, when your manager and you are friends, are you establishing a friendship? How is that going as far as um, boundaries or, or have you had to establish them or how do you can, I mean, is it difficult when you're working in the office with your boss and then you also have outside uh, relationship? 
That is so funny. No, it is not. Why is it funny? Because it's it's not. We go to work and we sit down and, and, and we have the most enjoyable conversation. Um, I think with her, um, as, as long as you, uh, she, she doesn't do a lot of micromanager, micromanagement. Um, mm-hmm. As long as you're getting your work done um, and, 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 um, and when people are coming into the office about personal things that, that needs to be discussed with uh, myself and Denisha, um, it's more so knowing how to conduct ourselves. But uh, we uh, we st- we still have personal uh, close close relationship even in the office and and it's and it's um and it's all respect and uh, like I say it's it's something I've never had since I've been here um, in Dallas and I I'm hesitant because I know I can go on and on and I don't want to talk as much but um it's 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 um such a relaxing feeling now and I've always wanted to work under someone where I can be myself and not work with a manager that has this this high archy and um is always uh business you know it's it feels good to come to work and be yourself and and be able to work at the same time if that makes sense and still have a personal relationship even in the office in outside of the office but still do your work and turn in turn things in because i even have to oscillate myself until i said look uh denisha i'm gonna be in a different office and I'm gonna be doing some I'm just because I got to get caught up with things because I still have a job to do despite of our personal relationship, and I still have to meet the deadline. So, were you it's, saying it's, that to you to her to your manager? Yes, yes, because there's another lady that we have um, that I share an office with that's contract, and um, we all have a um, um, great relationship, and it's just because of our manager, right? Our manager, um, she's she's a director of HR. She's um, She's um in law school and I look up to her. She's a mentor to me. I ask her if she can even mentor me after she's, you know, she decides to do something else because I think she's um kind of tiptoeing out of the door, which I hate because we started around the same time. And I'm just a little concerned about what would happen with me if she does decide to leave. <clears throat> and you're concerned in terms of y- y- you meaning your employment, if you, if they would, you're talking about fire you or something or are you saying in terms of growth in- I, I, it could be both because they hired her as an HR director and she um, feels like the role and the type of projects that they have is more on an HR journalist role or more of an HR manager um, role and so they could either move me up or they could either find a, um, a, a HR manager who has way more a little bit more experience than I do because I'm still learning so um mm-hmm. her background she's a little advanced for what they the project she gives gives them and so um I don't know what she's doing I haven't heard any updates as far as her still looking but um I'm just kind of hanging in there and and just getting all the nuggets and and um, get the nuggets get the nuggets thank you for sharing anyone else this morning about our personal boundaries good morning Miss Faith Yes, good morning, Ladiva. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. Good job, Sheena. I'm so proud of you um, as well. I'm doing the same thing, Sheena. Um, you know, we had a thing in our workplace two weeks ago talking about speak up culture. We had a presenter uh, talk to us about that. You know, when you want something in your career or your home life or whatever the case may be, you have to speak up. And I took, you know, I said, you know what? I'm going to speak up. So I did speak up, or spoke up, excuse me, spoke up. And I reached out to our chief people officer about two weeks ago. And I asked him, I said, sir, I said, you know what? You you drop a lot of nuggets in our meetings. I said, do you mind being my mentor? And he said, Miss Colson, I'll be honored to put me on schedule. And he met with me Monday. He gave me so many nuggets. I wish, I'm like, Sheena, I, I had pen and paper. I was writing so fast. I wanted to catch it up because he was just telling me how to become a business leader, how to sort up a company. You know, he. He owns part of this company that I work for, half of it. And he become a chief people officer. And he was just telling me, you know, about motivation, about classes I can take if I wanted to pursue this, you know, degree or whatever the case may be. And he told me, he said, I'm always here for you all. Don't be scared to speak up. If you want to learn, ask. And so after our meeting, it went so good. He said, no, Dreva, before we end this meeting, put me on schedule again for next month. Let's do it again. I want to keep mentoring you. You spoke up. You ask me, can I be your mentor? And I'll be willing to do it. But if you don't talk, I can't I can't help you. So I'm learning from thank God for Breakfast of Champions, this room, 
I get early morning nuggets and I get nuggets throughout the day. So if you don't speak up, you won't get it. So yes, Sheena, I do agree. I do agree everything what you were saying. Keep up the good work. Thank you. And and thank you for sharing that because um that what you just uh, communicated to us, your mentor who is the owner, part owner of your company, he gave a bound, he, he communicated a boundary to, to everyone who was listening or whatever environment that was when the meeting, well, you have an open door. He said, you know, that you can talk to him to speak up. So his, he doesn't have a boundary that is negative. He has a boundary that, hey, you can come in and you can do this and I can meet with you once a month. So he set a parameter that I can give you, what, 30 minutes, an hour, or once a month in order to do that, you know, to be able to pour into you. Now, can he do that for everyone? Maybe not, <laughs> you know, but maybe he might have five or maybe he might have 10 employees that he will mentor, you know, within a certain period of time. But at least he established a, a way to come in and be able to share or to encourage or to empower someone through mentorship. You know, and he's an extender, a ladder extender. So therefore, he had his set his boundaries. I can do it once a month. I can't do it every week. I can't do it bi-weekly, but I can do it once a month and I can give you this this amount of time. So and that's and that's so true, Miss Faith, because like I said, when we end the conversation, I was just thinking I was gonna get that one nugget from him that one day. But when mm -hmm. he said LaDreba put me on schedule once a month, let's meet on a Tuesday for 30 minutes. I heard him put up on the schedules he could see and he accepted it. So of course I communicate with my boss. I'm told I'm going through this, you know, learning this uh from this mentor. And she said, I think you should soak it all up while you can, especially when you're going out for higher roles and he's he's trying to groom you to get to that top level. Take advantage of it, soak it in. And I'm telling you, Miss Fate, I had my pen, I was writing so fast. <laughs> but you know, he told me, he said, We got time. We're gonna have more time to go back and talk about that and, and be presentable and be professional. I was on camera and I was slowing down and just understand what he was saying because this is our first meeting, you know, alone as far as like on you know teens without having other distractions, and okay. we set up a, like a nice uh, foundation how we're gonna do it. And so I'm just thankful, like I said, for this room is Marilyn, her vision. She's she's teaching us as well. You're teaching us, and you know we just need to soak it all up when we can. So I right. do thank you, Miss Faith. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. We all we all in this together. I would like to ask Latoya. So she's in the medical field. Latoya, do you have a minute to talk about any personal boundaries that you might have to establish in your work environment? Good morning. Um Good morning, Latoya. Yeah. When I basically, you know, when I'm with my patients and stuff, I, you know, have to have you know, boundaries for myself and, you know, recognize, you know, the boundaries for the patient, um, you know, so, I mean, sometimes we have patients that come in there and they have, you know, little attitudes or, you know, whatever's going on with them, you know what I'm saying, but, you know, still have to be respectful, so that's mostly my thing, you know, I understand you're sick, you know, and stuff like that, and even can, you know, in my, uh, you know, empathize, you know, with you and everything like that, but we still have to be respectful so I can take care of you properly. So that's mostly what all of us, you know, it's just a respect thing for is communication wise, you know, um, and stuff. And then I was just thinking like with teams, we use that um, also at work, but really we use it so much because, you know, it's a big organization. So the call center is not in our office, so it's somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So the patients call in, they're not speaking to our, they're not communicating with our office or, you know, where their appointment is. Mm -hmm. So they have to communicate on teams with us about, you know, if they're going to be late or, you know, and stuff like that. And for us on an organizational level. So mm -hmm. we use teams as well. But then we also, if they have personal chats, so if you need to speak to from another office to somebody, mm -hmm. you know, you can chat, put it in that personal chat. But basically, mm -hmm. it's a respect thing. You know, you respect me, I respect you. 
I yeah, I, I understand. And then Latoya, I'm gonna share I'm gonna, well, I share it with everybody in the room because we're all in here, but something that we could she probably can relate to. Um, when my mother was sick in the hospital, um it, it, I think well in Mother Francis, they have, I think it's a contracted hospital, um, kind of separate. It's in Mother Francis, but it's up on the higher floors or whatever. I can't really remember what floor it was on. It's been so long ago. But anyway, those patients stay there for a longer period of time than they would normally stay in the hospital. So my mother was there for such a long time, maybe like 30, 45 days or whatever. She got so intimate with the nursing staff there that mm -hmm. she would start hollering uh, whoever's on duty if she needed them, instead of pushing the button, she'll start hollering their name. <laughs> like, she, like she's at home or whatever, calling someone. And it, it was getting like, look, mom, you, you can't holler out the nurse's name. So they had to tell her that. So they had to establish a boundary my, with my mother. And it's just, I mean, you know, it, you go through so many different things um, in, in that, you know, hospital environment depending how long the patient is there. It's just, if they're just there a couple of days, yeah. But when you have someone who is there, you really get to know, you know, you get to interact with them. And so she felt like she was at home. So they had to establish a boundary with her. So um, I would like to ask Miss Nita, um, if you could come off of your mic, do you, can you share with us any personal boundaries that you might have to establish um, during your career, if you have have a moment to share, Miss Anita Bell, I, if she's available, okay, Miss Venor, do you have a minute that you can share if you have any? Uh, yes, I do. I do have a minute. Okay. Um, yeah, there are some boundaries that I've really had to uh, set up because I do have an open door policy um, uh, with my staff and my employees. But um, but what I've noticed is that my open door policy has become too open door. So mm -hmm. I've had to basically set some boundaries and, and let the uh, let my employees know, you know, there is a chain that you need to follow. And instead of you skipping, you know, I, I have five supervisors. So instead of you bypassing the supervisors and, and making sure that they can or to find out if they can resolve an issue or a problem instead of co directly coming to me, because, you know, my supervisors, some of them are green and they're still in a learning process. So um, majority of the time um, they'll tell me, you know, well, you know, we we feel more comfortable coming to you because we know it'll, it'll be addressed and it'll get fixed. Yeah, but. I need to give them the opportunity to learn. And then also this is my time for my personal space and my personal boundaries. Cause a lot of the times, even though I have my door closed for some reason, they still feel like they can just knock and come on in without me even saying, you know, uh, come in or I'm available or whatever the case may be. So yeah, I've had to really set some boundaries with my, um, with my, with my employees to let them know, you know, first follow the chain of command. If that doesn't work, then come see me and we'll set up a time to, to talk. Mm -hmm. And do you have to um, say initially, if someone comes into your, your, um, your organization, do you have to disclose what that chain of command looks like? So they do know what the, you know, what the flow is and, and what that boundary looks like. Yes. Normally when I first come into an office, I do let them know, you know, I do have an open door policy, but which I do need you to follow the chain of command. So first you do need to go speak with your supervisor. And if your supervisor doesn't, isn't, um, it's not working out with your supervisor, then come and speak with me. Um, a lot of the times, like I said, they, they just bypass the supervisor. So my first question when they do come to me is, did you speak with your supervisor and what did they say? Right, right, right. And and probably why do they do that sometimes because they don't have a good relationship with their with their first line supervisor? Sometimes um, that's the case. Um, or a lot of times, like I said, they just know that um, that. I'll make maybe they feel like I'll make it a priority where the supervisors are not. Mm -hmm. OK, that's good. 
That's good. Well, thank you, um, Venora. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate no problem. It. I had to establish on, on my team a boundary where when when you have a team and I had a team environment, I had 15 employees and we service, we were a service team. We service the organization in terms of staffing or HR, in terms of training and also budget. So some of them had relationships with people in the organization. And I found out <clears throat> one of my employees, they had a conversation with someone in the organization in terms of work. And if we were a little behind, it was during COVID and we were getting established and we were behind on some tasks in, in a certain, I can't remember if it was budget or a training, but she was sharing how, you know, how far behind we were trying to get established. And that person who she shared that information used that and went to their manager in the organization that we serviced because they were wondering why it was taking so long. And so it caused a confusion. It caused disruption. And I had to set a boundary. I had to set a boundary with my team and use that as an example. And sometimes you have to set a boundary that might not be comfortable for everybody in that, you know, in that particular, because um, I had a sub team and that particular sub team, but it impacted the whole team. And I had to tell my team, it's like, look, whatever goes on in our, in our family, in our team stays in our team. I, you know, I don't care if you have a friend outside in another organization or whatever, but what it goes in this house, you keep it in this house. You don't share it outside because you don't know what the motive of that, of that person or who they're going to tell. And then all that will fall back and it will hurt us, you know, so you have to protect us. So I had to establish a boundary that sometimes in that area, it wasn't very comfortable because I had to really point out these things. And then that person was embarrassed a little bit. And then I had to talk to them and tell them before I even communicated to the whole team what happened. Cause I didn't want to establish any bad feelings within their own, you know, uh, peer environment. But I had to use that as an example. And sometimes we have to use those examples in terms of how it can impact your work environment, your relationship, especially in a managerial position. You are responsible for what goes on in your sphere of influence within your assignment. And so whatever happens, however we're servicing, if you're in a service organization, how you're servicing, giving them products, giving them customer service, all that is it, the reflection of you. And so we have to be careful, even in our work environments, on how we interact with those outside, especially outside your own team or your own group environment, because what you share, what's going on in the workplace could impact your team. It could impact you, your team, and also your manager. So that's just another example of um, personal boundaries. Okay, what about um, anyone have any other uh, examples that they might have gone through in the workplace that had to, you had to set a, a boundary, a personal boundary? Anyone else? Any personal boundaries that you might have? Okay. I don't know if there's anything in, in the chat. Someone has their mic open? That, that was me, Robin. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It, even in that environment, um, even though it's a you know Christian church and everything, I did have to set a boundary. And it took me a long time because I wasn't one to just say, okay, you need to stop. So um, my direct supervisor who's the executive pastor, he has this thing about women. He's more like a male chauvinist kind of person. Mm -hmm. And so he would a lot of times talk to me in the wrong way. And mm -hmm. it wasn't, although it wasn't just me, he had this air about him. And so um, he started or was doing this with other people in the church, actually. And so the senior pastor came to me and he asked me, he said, is, is so-and-so doing this? 
I said, yeah. He said, have you talked to him? I said, no. And um, because at that point, I was getting ready to jet. I was on my way out. I was like, I'm not dealing with this anymore. I'd rather just leave. And um, But God wasn't opening any doors. So I had to um, talk to him. And the senior pastor gave me the blessing. He said, you need to, because if you don't, and um, I'm getting ready to release him. So, um, so I talked to him, you know, respectfully. I let him know that, that the way he's talking to me isn't, you know, right, isn't godly, isn't the Christian way, isn't even right, period. And it surprised me because he apologized. And ever since then, he has changed the way he talks. Now, every now and then he'll slip up. But one thing I know um, is that the Holy Spirit is working on him. I know yeah. we don't get that in every environment. I know that already. But, you know, I know the Holy Spirit is working on him and he's really trying. So, um, you know, I'm glad that I finally spoke up and, you know, so I want to share that. That's, oh, thanks for sharing that, Robin. I mean, that um, that's another boundary that sometimes we have to establish in terms of how people address you or talk to you. Um, how they, you know, treat you or even the nonverbals, you know, it, sometimes it's not always how they verbalize. It's even the nonverbals of how they treat you, uh, eye shifting or whatever. And so we always have to do that. And we always have to, you know, allow the Holy Spirit and pray about it because sometimes it's, I mean, not sometimes, but when we pray, and and God is opening that person up, you know, that's why it's good to pray about seasons and time. And when uh, Pastor Denise, I recognize you in a second, um, you know, those times and those seasons, right, when it's the right timing to pray, you know, when when it's not to pray, I mean, to say, I'm like, I wanted to um, say that, to say or confront that person. Because emotions get in the way, right? Okay, Pastor Denise, you can come on. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Uh, yes, I have, uh, my ministry is on my father's property. So I had to set boundaries with him because it's real difficult when you think about it. It's number one, your father, where he would come and get some of our guys from the ministry and maybe have them go do some work for him or go somewhere with him or ride with him somewhere without letting me know that he's getting one of the guys. And I had to let him know those men are in ministry. They're not here to serve in the capacity of just leaving when you want them to leave. Um, you need one of them to do this. They're here to get their lives together. But I did have to set boundaries with him. And in the beginning, it was hard to the point where I almost felt like I was going to have to move the ministry, but he finally got it. I actually had to seek counseling from our board and others about what was going on because he's actually on the board as well. And they had to help me understand and to speak to him that ministry is ministry and he can't cross those lines on personal relationship with the men there is a time a place and a season for everything but he can't just override the fact that i'm actually i'm the director of the ministry he's on the board but he doesn't run the ministry per se so doing that was a little difficult because he's still my dad he's on right. the board but he was crossing the the line he was crossing the boundaries of how he was interfering with the flow of the ministry Oh, that's good, Pastor Denise. I bet you you have to put, uh, you have to put in place a lot of boundaries, right? <laughs> um, even inside, internally and externally, as far as boundaries, because you probably have a schedule, you know, that they have to adhere to. They have responsibilities, and that could infringe in their flow, you know, in in terms of what they are there to do. But just boundaries, you know internal and external so that's awesome pastor denise for our sharing that with us um does anyone else have any other examples and it doesn't have to be it could be also in situations 
um, as far as personal boundaries with the comfort level, you know, of social interactions. Um, for an example, I had to, um, one time when I first came into a management role and sometimes our employees will kind of test you um, in terms of what you would take and what you won't take. And so in, in some cases uh, surrounding those parameters, you have to set your boundaries up front <laughs> because if you don't set them up front, they'll try to infringe or they try to test your emotions. You know, they try, they want to put you, you have some people that try to put you in a corner to see if you're going to get out of character. Those type of situations sometimes happen. So I had a test where um, I was in a staff meeting and one of my employees, she just lashed out. I mean, she just started talking to me like, I don't want to do, I can't remember exactly what she said, but it, it, it was something in this area. I don't want to do that. I don't think it's fair. I don't, and she just started just going on, you know, and I had to put my hand, slap my hand down on the table and say, look, you, first of all, we have etiquette <laughs> in our meetings. We have conversation. And we acknowledge, you let me acknowledge you before you just start speaking out. That's very disrespectful. You would not disrespect our meeting and the uh, and your peers in this, you know, so you have to set that and you have to constantly keep that and you have to remind them, you know, this is how, it's almost like you might say ground rules, you know, but they are boundaries because you're not going to do this. And if you do it, this is going to happen. So you have to set those parameters. So sometimes they're not always, you know, it could be the hard ones that you have to set. Sometimes we have to set it when the actual um, situation happens. And sometimes you have to set those boundaries up front to let them know up front, this is what is going to happen. This is what's not going to happen. So anyone ha ever had to be in that situation where you had to set the boundary up front before anything ever happened? Has anybody been in that type of situation of a, um, setting a boundary? You kind of, you kind of give that up front. Anyone? Okay. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> you haven't gotten to the, to that part. Well, the just to um kind of tie up from our conversation, we've had a really good dialogue today. I really appreciate it. We're getting um to this seven o'clock hour and uh, uh, a.m. hour, so we want to um mind everyone's time. If um Regina, can you check the chat? I just want to make sure before we close out that anyone's comment that we might have um might have missed. I don't want anyone's chat in uh, in the chat to be overlooked. If you uh, can do it, is there anything that we need to address? Um no, um we use it as awesome. Mainly people just, you know, saying great dialogue this morning. And oh. um, you know, one, uh, one one lady said yes, definitely bathed in prayer, and was just complimenting um, whatever um, Pastor Janice had spoke on. Okay. Just mainly, you know, just okay. Luxury. I just want to make sure that everybody's voice is heard or addressed because um, everyone has, is bringing value. We all brought value today, um, and this is so important. You know, even as you know, I'm not going to let that ladder, our ladder experiences go yet. But as we are climbing our ladder in our career, all this makes the full package, you know, of who we are and how we are interacting. We have these boundaries. We have workplace environments that we have to make sure that we keep our character. We keep our behavior our interactions with others. We're always professional. And all this is the foundation as well in terms of how we interact with others as we're climbing this ladder because we have different relationships 
at different times. So I thank you, um, everyone for coming in the Good room. Good morning, Faith. Oh, yes. Good morning. I've been trying to jump in there. Um, <laughs> I, hey, um, you were asking that last question about have you had to set up things like prior or, you know, different things like mm -hmm. that. I think yes. that when you are um, like overseeing ministries or overseeing um, any type of workplace or anything like that, I think it's very important that you be proactive. A lot of times you can see things that may be on the horizon uh, uh -huh. that may come up, you know, like all of the conversation that you guys have talked about, but you can be proactive, like, you know, where they say where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, and you see certain things that are coming up, like, um, uh, like misconduct, you know, um, instead of pointing out, you know, um, one particular person during that time, you address the whole room. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when there is uh, one situation that's getting out of order, you might want well to go ahead and nip that in the bud just in case it's coming up somewhere else because we err from the truth a whole lot. And that's what great management is all about is that we are looking out not just in one particular area, but we're looking out for the totality of everyone. You mm -hmm. know, it may be little things that were dropped. I heard you say something about when you guys are in a meeting, you know, that um, somebody may have spilled something that went on in the meeting. Those things have to be done proactively because we deal with people, everyday people. And sometimes people don't think about things that they are doing and you have to let them know in advance that in this particular arena, we have to be very conscious because those things can become like a wildfire and go into areas that people don't understand and they can twist words around. So I think it's very good that we be proactive, you yes. know, with our, with our management styles as well. Yes, I agree a hundred percent. And yes, it could be a wildfire because you have you ever had that experience where um, you might be in a circle and someone starts uh, uh, say a phrase and they, and you have to repeat it to the next person and the next person and you go all the way around by the end what you repeated initially is totally changed and that's what could happen they could twist your words or twist why you said what you said and your whole situation in which you were just communicating to one person has gone through the whole organization or it's gone, you know, and gone just through a couple of people. And it's not the intent. It wasn't the motive. And someone took it the wrong way, misinterpreted it. And now it can be, uh, hopefully not, but it could be um, a disaster going on, a wildfire for something. Absolutely. There's something that's so minute and they made it so big, you know. And sometimes, you know, those types of situations happen and that's when you have to get things under control but you want to do it like Marilyn said proactively and address it so it will not if it happened one time it won't happen again so you can you have to have a little control in that and that's what leadership but, yes that's right I want to say, say this last thing I know you're trying to get off the line um one one thing this if this also helps that we may not think about there are some very quiet people. They're very reserved when it comes down to speaking up about things and they see things in the background that may be going on. When a leader takes the lead and speaks up proactively about that, it makes that person very comfortable to come forward and share the things that they want to share because if, because if they feel like uh, something gets out of hand and you know what, I don't know if I can speak up about that or not. When the leader takes the lead, and shows that they are they are in touch with the surroundings of what's going on. It makes the people that are working with you know that I have a voice as well. It's not like we're being smothered or anything like this. So I think it does take leadership taking that role at the very beginning of it, knowing that I do care about my people. I care about everything that's going on here, and I want the people to be able to have a voice as well and be free to speak, just in case they are the quiet bunch that's in the back. Yes, that's good because the quiet quiet ones are very, ob they observing everything. 
They, they might not say anything, but they're observing. And they catch things that we, you know, as a manager, or even as your peer, they might catch things that you haven't even seen because they are quiet and they're listening, you know, attentively and, and they're watching. And, um, you know, it's good to have their back as well that we have addressed maybe an issue or something that they don't have the voice, you know, to say it. And even in in our, um, and we'll talk a little bit later uh, about our organizational boundaries, but I can say um, even in my role now as a contractor, as a former manager in the same, or in the same agency, I have to watch my boundaries that I'm setting because I can bring up things in a staff or situations in a staff meeting. As an example, yesterday, we had a lot of talk about policy processes and what have you. And I, in the month of June, I have to fly to DC for a meeting. And um, I brought up a suggestion. I said, when we meet, and I had to, first of all, I had to, I had to preface my statement is acknowledging who is in leadership in that room, which was two managers. It was the uh, frontline manager and the director. So I had to preface myself as saying, I, I know that you are, you have already maybe set an agenda um, that you have wanted to establish when we meet. But just as a suggestion, I would like to suggest that we do this and this and this. So I set a boundary, even though they know I've had a, I've been in a management position, I'm not a manager anymore. I'm not a federal employee anymore. So I have to set my boundary as a contractor. I have a voice, but I can, I, I can only interject so much. And I have to keep that, you know, constant in in my head that I am not that person anymore. And I have to sometimes keep that boundary around who I am and not interject my past life in this present role. So yeah, these boundaries are, we're, we're going to get into it. And so I really appreciate all of the comments the in the chat also, our verbal comments, our discussion, our dialogue this morning, I appreciate each and every one of you. All of us are bringing value to our discussion about these about boundaries, and I, I want you to start thinking about some other things that we haven't even touched yet about the workplace in terms of boundaries and how it can impact us at different levels as we're climbing the ladder. You might have boundaries when you were just starting to climb that could help someone in the room and those who are listening on our YouTube channel. We want to touch every area so we can give them value, those who are not in the room, that they'll be able to maybe walk out, you know, climbing the ladder in this corporate world as far as their career. So don't forget tonight at seven o'clock. We will have Black Love for Singles. So if you will want to come back in tonight at 7, we would love to have you. And if you would like to invite your friends or your family to come in, uh, we definitely can give you that information. So you all have a wonderful day. We're going to um, pray and then we'll be released. Father, thank you for this time together as family with the Breakfast of Champions. Thank you, God, as you help us walk through this day, through, through this journey in our careers and our workplaces. Father, we thank you for those who have gotten promoted. God, who those who are climbing their ladder and their ladder is being extended. We thank you for all the growth, God, all the examples where we have grown and we have set up boundaries and even other areas in our lives and how we are keeping our mental, emotional and our personal lives just in you, that you are in the center of it all. So we thank you for this day. Keep us healthy and safe as we interact today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys, and we'll see you um, tomorrow. And have a great day.